it's very important when kids are in the developmental stage to bring them into the weight room and teach them the right movement patterns. Because what happens a lot is that you find yourself with kids that are like 17 years old, 18 years old, and they should be moving units mm -hmm. that they have no clue what they're doing, you know, when they're on the weight room. So yeah. going back to his question, I think that it's very important from early stages to get players into the weight room, but with the goal of teaching them how to do the right movement, how to push, how to pull, how to squat, how to hinge, how to lunge on the right ways. So if you got those patterns properly by the age that where a kid is like 15, 16 years old, you, it's just, like, as I said before, it's just increasing, you know, weights mm -hmm. and it's absolutely safe. There is absolutely no, nothing that could happen, you know, if you're doing it the right way. Good technique. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you got to have the right technique. It's like everything. If you're hitting your forehand, you know, with a grip like this and you're going, <laughs> whatever, yeah, at some point, man, you're hitting it two hours a day. People tend to get way more worried sometimes for a kid going into a weight room you know, and doing some exercises than someone that is probably hitting yeah, 20 million forehands <laughs> like, you know, with, yeah. the, with the worst ever technique. <laughs> Dude, like, yeah. he's going to get hurt through that. Yeah. Not, you know, in the weight room. Yeah, like, he's going to do like 10 reps, you know, yeah. something. Yeah. Like he's doing 20 million reps a week from the other thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so that, you know, it's, I think it's weightlifting and weight training is extremely important for any athlete because any action that you do on a, on a court or in any action on life, uh, you're doing it through your strength, you know, through mm -hmm. your muscles. So um, the force that you're able to apply into the ground to change direction, to accelerate, to decelerate and stuff like that is going to depend on how strong you are. Then once you have the strength levels, yes, then you have to be how efficient and how good you are at applying that force into the ground or into any movement that you're trying mm -hmm. to do. So if you ask me, okay, but what is the right level of strength, you know, that a, that a player should have or someone, the one that is useful for his sport. It's as simple as that. Like, is it the same from a rugby player than from a tennis player? Definitely not. You know, like it's a complete, or from a football player to a tennis player? No. Like, a tennis player doesn't need those levels of strength. You know, they need probably to be able to sustain and do it over and over and over, uh, to apply that force fast over and over and over. It's a totally different demand. But that weight training has to be part of developing a tennis player. I'm 100% convinced of it. And I mean, it's not me, I mean, everyone that is serious in, in the, you know, strength and condition mm -hmm. would say like, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely necessary. Um, you don't need to overdo it. You don't need to stop doing it. It's, it's what I was saying before. I'm, I'm pretty simple. Everything is, there's no one thing. Yes. And this thing, no, 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 mm -hmm. you got to cover all the areas of the training. You got to cover the speed. You got to cover the agility. You got to cover acceleration, deceleration, footwork, uh, coordination, balance, strength, conditioning so everything has to be in the package to build a well-rounded tennis player 